Thanksgiving is certainly different this year, isn't it? Because of the pandemic, family gatherings are supposed to be restricted and possibly even canceled. Uh, my wife and I for many years lived outside of the United States where Thanksgiving is not a national holiday. Thursday, Thanksgiving was always just a work day. But the pastor of the Community Church of Madrid in Spain uh, invited us and some other people into their home on Saturday after Thanksgiving Day where we celebrated Thanksgiving together. So we had a gathering of international persons. We had traditional turkey, we had pies, but people would bring other dishes as well. My wife became famous for her Mexican casserole. And we just had the grandest time of being together, stimulating conversation, and of course, overly abundant, wonderful food. So I'm gonna really miss that. I missed that since I've been back in the United States. And now we have a daughter in Spain and two sons in Philadelphia. So we know what it's like also to be restricted uh, at Thanksgiving. You know, it seems easy to celebrate in the good times, doesn't it? <coughs> but it's harder in the difficult times. But you know what? It's in the difficult times, the harder times, in pandemic times, when it's even more important to worship. It's even more important to remember that God is the source of goodness. God is the source of love, and God is a source of abundant life. We need Thanksgiving this year, and we need to worship God during this Thanksgiving year. So this year, to guide our Thanksgiving reflection, I'm going to use the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, and let that guide our reflection today. Listen to verse 1. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things has done, in whom the world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Now thank we all our God. Thanksgiving, of course, is an individual thing and we all need to be grateful as individual persons before God and with others but the collective element is so important, and of course that's certainly what Thanksgiving is about, which we gather as families, friends, as a nation, to give God thanks and to acknowledge God as God, our Creator and the source of good. And we worship with heart and hands and voices. We've got to worship with heart, with sincerity. You know, it's very different when someone says thank you because it's just a rote thing they know they're supposed to do, and they may not actually be thankful, but they're going to be nice and follow convention versus someone who's truly thankful. Uh, the difference, for example, when uh, small children, right, we teach them, when someone gives them something, we say, now what do you say? And they say, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like they weren't going to say it until you reminded them, right? And the difference of when you give something to a child and they explode with joy and grab and hug your leg, <laughs> you know they're really thankful. I think God wants that heartfelt uh, gratitude uh, because we recognize the genuineness and the truth of God being behind the goodness and the grace and the gift received. And we lift our hands, with, we, we praise God with hands, lift them in praise and worship, but not only that, Another way of thanksgiving is when we actively engage in giving and serving someone else. That is a wonderful expression of gratitude. That's sort of paying it forward and passing it on to someone else. I've received something good. I'm going to pass it on to someone else. So that your very act of giving and serving is an act of thanksgiving. And of course, our voices in which we acknowledge, no, this isn't just good luck of winning the lottery. God is in this. This is a God thing. And we tell the good news of God's love and goodness. Now thank we all our God, who wondrous things has done. You can see from the decorations, it alludes to the beauty of creation. And the fall, for those who are from northern climes and colder climes where the leaves change and everything, fall is one of the most beautiful and favorite times of year. And Thanksgiving comes at harvest time. Uh, 
and we think of the marvelous wonders that God has done. Um, I remember, of course, I saw a mountain for the first time at age 15, and it was just so astounding to see a mountain. But also I can appreciate the, the high plains and the, pra the prairies where the sky dominates. You don't pay attention to the landscape as much as to the sky. And I remember the first time I stepped in the ocean as a college student, and I had this mystical experience, if you will, that this is alive. This is a living being. This isn't just a body of water. This is a living being. So at this Thanksgiving time, we want to look up at the stars. We want to look at nature and think of the wondrous things God has done. But we also think of the wondrous things God has done through history. I mean, just think about the story of Christianity. Christianity began as a tiny little sect within Judaism. And within 100 to 150 years, it had penetrated the Roman Empire. And today, over 2,000 years later, it's the, the largest, has the largest number of adherents of any religion in the world. But also, of course, to make Thanksgiving, to remember God's wonders, we need to think of our own lives. The way God has brought you salvation to faith has given you so many blessings in different ways. This is the time of year when it's really need to count our blessings. And during the pandemic, if you're feeling a bit depressed about things that you can't do or celebrations that you cannot hold or people that can't be there with you or you with them, this is a time to begin counting your blessings and remembering the wondrous things that God has done and does do every day regularly for you. In our church, we give thanks for the drive-in church that enables us to continue worshiping as a body in spite of the pandemic. And I love this last part, last line in the first verse, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. You know, that maternal experience, that ex experience of maternal intimacy, which as the little baby and the smallest children, we're not, well, we may are conscious of it, but we can't express it in words. We can't talk yet, but we can still remember and we can feel that experience of connectedness, of being enveloped by love, of being protected, fed, cared for, and someone just rejoicing in our being and delighting of holding us in their arms. You know, this is an image of God's love. God loves us much more than our mothers or than any other person ever has in our lives. God loves us so many times more. So it's very appropriate to think of these things like the experience of being in our mother's arms as an experience of the love of God. And that can soothe us, that can feed us, that can comfort us, that can give us security and courage to go forth and to develop and grow and be our own person. Verse 2, O oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us still in grace, and guide us when perplexed, and free us from all ills in this world and the next. May this bounteous God through all our life be near us. We may be suffering economic difficulties due to the pandemic and other things or health challenges and other stuff, but this hymn reminds us so beautifully that God is a God of abundance. God is the creator. God is not limited in resources, and we are not limited to just the resources at our disposal when we put our trust in God. There are God's disposal, God's resources that God can use to come to our aid and to uh, give us life. So God is our ultimate source of our total supply. God is our ultimate resource. Of course, God is much more than a warehouse full of goodies for us. God is a person who wants to relate to us in a very deep and personal way and to delight in sharing life with us out of love. But it's so important at this time of year to remember that God is a God of bounty and of abundance. And God is always near to us. God is never far from us. But the problem is, we don't always feel near to God. 
Sometimes when we're depressed, or we're going through a hard time, it seems like our prayers are just bouncing off the wall and going nowhere. But we know because of God's Word, we know because of other times and experiences in our lives that God is with us. God never leaves us alone, and God is there for us, and we can call on God for help. But we need to do our part to tune in to God and to be present to God's presence. And in the, in the hard times, it may be more difficult to tune in, but it's even more important to tune in. And that's one reason I'm so glad you have uh, tuned in to this online worship service today. With ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us. You know, God delights in giving joy. Joy is a feeling of pleasure and happiness. And God wants to give us those experiences, but God wants to share the joy with us as God shares our life. And that blessed peace of a healthy relationship. There's, peace is not just inner tranquility. Peace has to do with healthy relationships. And, the, and tranquility really is a result of healthy relationships. When your heart is in the right place, when you're in a good place with the other person or the group, uh, that sense of peace and contentment and security is just wonderful. And this all comes from God. Uh, with ever joyful hearts, God gives a source of our joy and of our peace. And I'm so glad that our God that we worship is a God who calls us to healthy relationships and wants us to delight and joy. God is not a killjoy. God is the source of joy. And then the last line of the second verse, keep us still in grace and guide us when perplexed. We all want to be in God's favor. God's love for us is unwavering. But God's favor for us somehow is connected often to our responsiveness, to our responsiveness to God. God is favor with us, but God's not going to coercively impose God's self on us. God sits, stands and waits patiently for us to respond and to open up to God very often. And to me, talking about uh, staying in grace, uh, staying in God's favor, isn't that God's attitude or heart towards us changes at all. I think most of the time it has more to do with, are we paying attention? Are we tuning in? Are we open to God's favor? Are we giving thanks to God for God's favor in different ways? And of course, guiding us when perplexed. If you're perplexed this Thanksgiving season, bring your petitions and your questions to God. Ask God for help. If you don't know the answer, if you don't know what to do, go to God. God may tell you right into your, into your mind and spirit, but God may give you the answer through other people. So you'll have to pay attention to how God responds to you. And then the third verse is really a, a praise of God as God. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given. The Son and Him who reigns with him, them in highest heaven. The one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore. For thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. We acknowledge God as the source of goodness, the source of love, and the source of abundant life. So we would end our Thanksgiving time focusing on God, the very source of it all. And of course, to talk about God in this verse, it gives us the Trinitarian picture of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father as the creator and the author of salvation. God is the one who has the plan of salvation from before creation, for the foundation of the world, it says in Ephesians, and sent the Son. And then the Son of God said, yes, I will go out of your love and go and serve and, and become incarnate. And of course, Jesus operates as a human being in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And now as the resurrected Christ, who is present by means of the Spirit and who is reigning. So God is one, in th one God in three persons, also three in one. For thus it was, is now, 
and shall be evermore. The reasons for thanksgiving are eternal. All eternity, all creation will be giving glory to God and thanksgiving to God because we are constantly receiving from God's goodness, constantly enveloped in God's love, and our very life is a gift from God. And we need to look at this eternal perspective in the bigger picture and remember who God is and remember what God is like as revealed in Jesus Christ to help put our personal lives in perspective. We need to put our personal lives in the, within the perspective and context of the bigger picture. In Jesus, we see what God's character is. We see God's salvific purpose. We see God's ultimate victory as he raises Jesus from the dead. So even though we may face things, even death itself, none of that, none of that can conquer God. We have a living hope in Jesus Christ, and we can be victorious no matter what happens. So let's use the eyes of faith to penetrate our circumstances and focus on the living God who is in us and around us this Thanksgiving. What are your reasons for Thanksgiving this year? As you think about it, bring God into the picture. Don't just think of the raise that you may have received or some other good things, the special vac uh, vacation you may have gotten to take in somewhere. Whatever those, that list of blessings, and it would be great to make a list of blessings, bring God into the picture and use the eyes of faith to discern God's hand in the midst of all of those blessings. Now, I'm going to pray, but after a prayer, we will join in singing a couple of verses of Now Thank We All Our God. Let us pray together. O oh God, truly we thank and praise you because you are God, the source of goodness, love, and life. You are the source of joy and peace. You are the reason we have reasons to give thanks to you. God, we want to thank you for all of the incredible blessings you have given to us in the past year and thank you for them. We want to thank you for your love and your favor upon us and upon our lives and that we can bring all of our needs and our concerns and problems to you and you walk with us through them and help us with them. God, we want to help us to develop an attitude of gratitude so that we live in a constant uh, a constant movement from within our souls of thanks to you as well as we trust you and delight in you and your love. May you make this Thanksgiving season extra special. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.